There's been a lot of Tyranid releases since the Leviathan box came out. So here's some more. I am, I am Tyranids have been pretty popular for the last couple of decades and even more so in the last few editions of Warhammer 40k. Everything from Crusher Stampede all the way up until the 10th edition data cards where they kind of took a little bit of a backseat. But after running 75% win rate at the end of 9th edition, they could probably afford to take a back seat for a little while. So let me show you one of the most standout eye-catching Tyranid High Fleet custom colors, that's a mouthful, that there is. All right, we know the drill. Starting from a black primer, we're gonna start layering up all the skin tones with a little bit of Vallejo model color, Royal Purple. Just like any other layering, and the layering in this video, we have thinned the paint down just a little bit, just so we have a nice smooth application. It may take a coat or two to build up a nice smooth even coverage. With that royal purple, we're gonna take some of AK Interactive's magenta and create a 50-50 mix. Now when I say 50-50, I don't mean one part to one part, I'm actually talking about making a color in between the two colors. And with that mix, we're gonna start picking out all the bulbous structures in the muscles. This is gonna become our mid-tone, so we want a decent amount in there, but we wanna leave some of that purple in the recesses. Again, we've slightly thinned this paint down, so it may take a coat or two to kind of build up that vibrancy, but this can also work in our advantage. When you're working with the same color slightly thinned and you're going back over itself, you can pick out even less to help create that transition. Here's where this all starts to pop. We're gonna take that magenta, of course it's slightly thinned down, and we're gonna pick out some of the higher raised parts. We're still gonna keep quite a bit of it, but this is only going to be the parts that we really, really want to accentuate. Some magenta paints can be quite thin and quite transparent, so we're gonna to have to go over these parts a couple of times. But again, just like the last step, this can work into our advantage where we're picking out the same spots with the same color in very, very thin layers. We can actually start to make those gradients and that's what is gonna give us a silky smooth finish. The other thing you'll notice with lighter and brighter colors is as they dry, they won't be quite as vivid as they were from when you first applied them with wet paint. So wait for that layer to dry and then come back and give another thin coat to really increase that saturation but to build up that color. Now we're just picking out some of the details on the face with Vallejo model color light pink. This is really gonna make a pop and start to draw attention to the face. After this step, we're basically done with the skin. Now, this is a fantastic method if you wanna take a little bit more time and have things stand out. But if you have an endless swarm or batch paint to do, you can use these same colors, but dry brushing. You're just gonna use those exact same mixes going back and forth with just a little bit of paint, build up those gradients, and really start to make a pop in no time at all. Here's where the fun stuff starts, the carapace. Now, I'm starting with the Vallejo model color blue. It's just blue, no extra fancy names, just blue. And essentially, if it's a carapace, if it looks like it's some kind of organic armor piece, it's gonna be painted this color. Then for our next step, we're gonna start highlighting. And for this, it's just Vallejo model color medium blue. You don't have to go too insane with this step because the following steps are really what's gonna punch it all up. And here's where things start to get just a little bit more interesting. We're gonna take Vallejo model color emerald and we're gonna be focusing it more in the center of the carapace. We're gonna drag it down just a little bit. It is thinned down like the rest of our paints. So we're gonna be going back and forward a couple of coats, a couple of layers just to build up a gradient of intensity towards the top of the carapace. And we're gonna hit those armor plates on the head as well. We're essentially just gonna make a straight line all the way down the back. We're also gonna be hitting this color on a few other areas, like just above what would probably be the shoulders if Tyranids do have shoulders. And the armor plates on top of those thick, thick, sweet buggy thighs.
Now to highlight the green, we're going to take a little bit of Vallejo model color blue green and mix it with just a touch of AK Interactive white. And we're really going to start to pull the focus towards the center and the very raised parts of the carapace, but just where the green is. Now, just before we get into the last step to finish off the carapace, we're going to fill in a couple of the other details that make miniatures feel complete. Like filling in the eyes with white. Yeah, that was a little bit of a flex moment. I was proud of myself on that one. Getting it first shot on camera. Yeah, that's right. We're going to do both eyes on camera. First take, no overspill. And a little bit of pink for the tongue. Here's why we finished off all those other details before we finish off the carapace, because we're going to be using the same color, AK Interactive's Fluorescent Green. We're going to pick out and put a little bit of a dot on the eyes, as well as that weird little organic bubble thing on the gun. And now we're going to make that carapace pop by taking that same fluorescent green and picking out all the high spots of the carapace, right down the line from the center of the head all the way down the spines on the tail. Fluorescents are incredibly, incredibly thin transparent paint, so you would need quite a few coats of this to really get that vibrant. But what it does is because it's so saturating, you can pull it down into some of the other darker places on the carapace and it'll start to blend and saturate and just make all this amazing poppy goodness. The really cool thing about schemes like this on factions like Tyranids is we can take all those same steps and apply it to other models and have them feel uniform. As always, a massive thank you to InGames for sponsoring the channel and they also actually provided the Leviathan box for us which we pulled this little gribbly out of. These things came out pretty awesome for the time involved. I, I know that I'm saying and there's a little bit of bias there but honestly I think they're pretty damn cool. So much so that I'm going to be painting the rest of the Leviathan Tyrannies just like this. And if you try it out, I'd love to see it. Also, here's how our dry brush version ended up and this other little gribbly. <laughs> and let's throw some big love at the prismatic heretics that keep this channel running. We love you guys and we'll see you next Tuesday.